bruh. Merry Christmas, 
to sneak around, but I'm dummy thick, and the clap of my ass cheeks keeps alerting the guards.
ブウェイクアップザピンクサレトライングツードリンクザクリーニングサプライズアゲイン
トルスティスフェスティバル豪華クルーパーティーのスト The present to our delivered and now I can watch people slow things at home.
Koopa love.
Koopa love.
I did not. I did not sleep well at all. It's like people kept beating me up. It's like I kept getting beaten the whole time. What the heck is up with that? Who, who would do such a thing? Who would do such a thing? It's like I kept getting fucking pelted always. No dignity. No dignity. No poise. Oh, that was a fuck. <laughs> oh, no, stop. No, no, stop. Please, please. God, fuck it. Oh, just this. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> and to all. Fuck. No, you throw one more thing and the stream ends. You throw one more thing. And the stream ends riff. Fuck. Now. Please. Please. Stop. Okay. Well, I guess you don't want to read a special unique story for today. I guess you don't want to read a special, very special story for tonight. I need to not raise my voice because this is supposed to be soothing. It's supposed to be quiet. It's supposed to be relaxing. How do I not raise my voice and go like, fuck. Fuck you. Fuck you. You stop now. Now you stop. Please. I am Koopa. Or more like Poopa. No. Please. How is the audio right now? Is this relaxing enough? Is this is this good enough? Please let me know if this is um <laughs> Fuck it's time to stop. No more. Where the fuck are your parents? <laughs> How is the... Please, let me know. Come on, I'm asking for actual feedback here, not to be pelted from all directions. And if you have no haven't noticed, we have a lovely tree done by Troopas. We have some lovely, lovely ornaments there. Please take a picture. Take take a picture. Take a look. Take a picture. Peter Piper. Ida, 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 Ida. Thank you for that, Ida. Okay, yes, we will be reading Christmas stories under fire now. I guess. Um, I guess that is the thing now. That's the thing. So, let's see. I'll be. I'll be right here. We'll have it. Fuck you. So we have a very. Okay. We have a very lovely story for tonight. I'm just gonna... Should I stay on the... Fuck. 
should I stay on the couch or should I um does this sound relaxing enough because um it's quite hard doing ASMR on the uh on the blue yeti I can try to turn up the gain a little bit too perhaps that's a bit better um so yes what an absolute fucking chad look at him look at him so merry merry christmas troopers tonight i bring you a story done by javier de la rosa or perhaps calavera in chat now you notice i said javier instead of saying xavier i have to fight the urge to say xavier every time because i don't how know how to spanish i don't know how to espanol i don't know how to mexican um, shells are failing. War was not over by Christmas. No, war had only just began. So, we have a based and turtle-pilled book for Christmas. We have a nice little story finished to read. Um, unfortunately, I am not dead on the couch. Um, I know somebody asked earlier, are we going to get a Super Robot Wars 30 stream for Christmas? Maybe after Christmas. I haven't gotten the chance to get that just yet, but I would like to do it at some time. Xavier Renegade Angel. <laughs> yes, yes. And I also noticed, um, some, somebody confusing me also for C2, um, from Code Geass. And C2 was actually a big inspiration for me. I actually really, really liked, um, I really, you know, that was, um, my go-to, you know, my go-to girl. I loved her and her green hair. Your Espanol is good. It's almost like you're Mexican. I am not. I am a proud, a proud mix of everything. But, okay, maybe. No, no, no. I, you cannot make me. You cannot make me be. Ah, uh, hello, hello, hello. And thank you, Chop, Cop of the Chopper, to the sub to Zumberge. Yes, okay, so we will be reading Troopa Trouble. Troopa Trouble. Colin is better than C2? Um, no, 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 no. I'm proud to be an American. Yes, because American is a genetic thing. <laughs> Wait, I can get in. So this is the fuzzies on it. So let's see. What happens when I do this? What if I go? How's that? Does that do anything neat? If I go. I don't know. I don't know. I, there's not a single drop of H. <laughs> there's a bunch of other stuff along with more Native American and some other stuff you know but not not a single drop of chinese or asian let's see how does this feel like the little ear scratchies the ear scratchies i'm in your ears i'm in your ears you can't stop me now it's hard to know what is good when you have the um when you are, uh, when you're not using an actual ASMR microphone, this is a impromptu one with the Yeti. I don't have, I've been wanting to get one of the FDO ones for a while. I may put that up as a, um, community goal, community goal. So anyway, um, I just cut my, cut myself a little bit. Um, so anyway, um, I will not get out from under your head. Imagine Koopa firing a loaded gun in your ear. Well, the problem is I don't have the revolver out quite now. I don't have the revolver out now because um, it was loaded earlier. So I and I did not get to deload that and bring that over, um, you know, so no revolver tonight. It's Christmas, so I'll spare you the trouble of dying. So anyway, we will be reading Troopa Trouble tonight. Troopa Trouble, along with a couple others. Um, so, let's start. In the place between dreams and reality where fantasies are born, lives a jolly band of cre lives a jolly band of creatures you have never heard of before. They are called troopas, hatched from a dream of all sizes, all shapes, any color you've seen. They love to have fun with one another, to play and frolic and run. But all the green and pink troopers that for some all but the oh, I'm sorry, let me restart this actually because I messed up a little bit. Um, and I should go through the illustrations because they look so good. 
In the place between dreams and reality, where fantasies are born, lives a jolly band of creatures which you have never heard of before. They are called troopas, hatched from a dream, of all sizes, all shapes, any color you've seen. They love to have fun with one another, to play and frolic and run, all but the green and pink troopas that for some reason did not get along. You pink thing, said Green angrily. Why can't you just go away? Why would I, responded Pink annoyed. You're the mean one. You don't even want to play. And even though this happened every other day, the troopers were always in complete dismay. The other troopers were always in complete dismay. I'm sorry, my sleuth Dexia is acting up. Okay, wait. What? Wait, what? Okay, hold on. We seem to be having an error with the slideshow. Why aren't you working? Slideshow. Slideshow. Slideshow Bob. Hold on. Just one moment. One moment. No, don't you fucking hit me. Don't you fucking hit me. Don't you fucking hit me. You piece of shit. Listen here. Listen here. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, you piece of shit. I'm talking to you. Okay, let's try now. Let's see. Will you work for me now? Please, oh please, won't you work for me? Won't you work for me now? I think my OBS is breaking. I, um... I think OBS is locked up. If you can hear me, please send help. I think OBS crashed. I think OBS may have crashed. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Okay, there we go. There we go. It had to load in. It started locking up. So, let us continue where we left off. What the heck is it doing with these? O OBS? O OBS? O OBS? OBS? I am so sorry, everybody. I am so sorry, Calavera, especially because I know you worked very hard on this, and, um... Oh no, OBS is locked up again. Hey guys, I'd just like to share that, um, my CPU is at 100%, and my memory is at 74%. So, um... Yeah. Uh, I don't... I think my laptop is shit in the bed really badly. I think my laptop is really, really shitting the bed. Oh no! Okay, we will actually... Hmm... Wait, 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 wait. I think I know a better way to do this. I think I know a better way. I apologize. I apologize so much. But I think, um... We're gonna have to just screen capture Honey View. And do it there. Um... So let's see. We're gonna we're gonna screen capture Honey View because we have to find a janky ass solution for you know, modern problems require modern solutions. So let us um apply our modern solution to this modern problem. Yes, the, the laptop's gonna fucking explode at this rate, won't it? Oh no. Well, everybody, the house will stay toasty and warm, so do not worry about, do not worry about the heat, do not worry about the cold or anything like that. We're going to be well insulated, we're going to be well, well insulated. Okay, so, here we go. We have our janky, janky solution, but you know what? We have a solution, we have a solution. So, anyway, Troopa Trouble by Javier de la Rosa. In a place between dreams and reality, where fantasies are born, lives a jolly band of creatures you have never heard of before. They are called troopas, hatched from a dream, of all sizes, all shapes, any color you've seen. They l love to have fun with one another, to play and frolic and run, all but the green and pink troopas that for some reason did not get along. You pink thing! said Green angrily. Why can't you just go away? Why would I? responded Pink annoyed. You're the mean one. You don't even want to play. And even though this happened every other day, the other troopas were always were always in complete dismay. Let's go without, let's go play without Pink, everybody. 
said Green to the other folk. But just as he said that, the other troopers escaped and left them alone. We don't want to play with a rude trooper like you, said the big gray trooper to the grumpy Green. We will play with the other colored troopers. You are far too unkeen. I also use my video card as a space heater sometimes. <laughs> hey, it's quite nice. Pink cried. Ha! Huh, serves you right. Wait up for me instead. But to, uh, to that, the others responded. No thanks. You're just as bitter. All you do is fight and bicker. Instead of reflecting on what they did wrong, the duo went back to fighting all day long. Look at what you did. Everyone left and it's all your fault. My fault, answered Pink snappily. If it weren't for you, I'd be playing as well. I wish you forever would hide in your shell. The sun went down and the moon came up, and the two siblings still wouldn't let up. This went on for hours, for days, for weeks. Could there be any way for these two to be peeps? The seasons changed, the clouds and the clouds rolled in, and neither of them would ever give in. Then one day, out of the blue, from a cot from the cotton like clouds, someone came through, hair like a flower bed, voice as soft as just voice as soft as silk. Irony that I messed that light up. The mother of all troopers, the source of their elk. All the troopers reunited, even green and pink stopped their fight, for there was nothing more important than this clumsy woman's shining light. Oh, my dear troopers, I've missed you aplenty. How have you behaved? Have you all been friendly? Mom, Mama, Mother, all the troopers answered back. From red to purple to yellow to black. I see you're all thriving. I see you're in sync. But what of your brothers? Where is green? Where is pink? That's such beautiful artwork. I do love the art so much. I love this style of trooper. I love them. This is a wonderful book. I need a physical copy at some point. Hidden behind the others were the green and the pink, growling at each other, unable to even speak. Although now that their lids laid upon their dear mother, they knew not why they were fighting one another. Maybe they were both jealous of the attention she gave. Maybe in the truths, that's why they were so misbehaved. The two troopers were, after all, the first to be dreamed, and for her uh, favor, they would fight until utterly fatigued. Troopers, answered, voiced their mother firmly, have you been misbehaving again? Have you been treating each other unfairly? Both green and pink nodded, for they knew they could not fool her. She smiled warmly and said, You have to understand that I love you all the same. To me, you're all the best. You don't need to feel stressed. Look at the, look at the eyes, the boobs, the, look at the little faces. Look at their little faces. I just want to hug them and just, oh, look, he took his hat too. He took off his hat. I'm sorry, said Green and Pink together. I appreciate the gesture, but I'm not the one you should be asking for forgiveness whatsoever, said their mother. Both of them looked at their siblings and then said without a stutter, I am sorry, they repeated, and the rest of the troopers answered, It's fine, Green, it's fine, Green, it's fine, Pink. It's not us who you angered. Look at them all. Look at those guys. Look at the flat guy. Look at the flat guy. Absolute Chad. And blue, absolute Chad. Green and pink looked at each other. They had fought for what felt like ages. Thanks, but thanks to their siblings and their mother, they became, they each became a better brother. I'm sorry, pink. I'm sorry, too, green. With that and a friendly hug, their anger melted away. And even if they were to fight again, that was done for at least a day. In the place between, where, between dreams and reality, where fantasies begin, lives a jolly brand of creatures uh, you are now familiar with. They're called troopers, hatched from a dream, of all sizes, all shapes, shapes, any color you've seen. And even though they might have their differences, even though, and even though they might fight, at the end their love for each other will forever and always shine bright. Look at them. Look at them being happy now. They're so cute.
Look, that's wonderful. You're wonderful. I love this so much. I love this so much. Thank you again, Calavera, for this. It is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story. So thank you, thank you. Let me, um, actually, we'll keep the book. We'll keep the book on the, uh, stream top. So we'll do a couple other stories before bed. And, um, then I think we'll call it a night because I have to be up bright and early. And I guess, well, you know, you should too, although you're probably not the ones putting out the presents, huh? I'm the ones putting out these presents, you know? You know that? What? Well, somebody has to do this shit. Somebody has to do this shit. And it ain't you. Where is it? Where the fuck? Why is that present getting cutting off? Cut it off. What the pet the What the pet the 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 I don't know why one of the presents is in the fireplace now. <laughs> don't even know how that happened. Fuck. Okay, wait. There we go. No, it's not. It's still fucked. It's still fucked. Thank you for Dominate. Thank you for the sub to Banana Chick. Thank you so much. Big ups, big ups, big ups. And thank you, everybody, as well. Thank you so much for it. You could sell this in stores. I would. I would buy all of the copies of it. I would buy all of it. Actually, I will buy it. I will find a way to get this printed so it can be in the hands of many. I will read this to my children's. Mom, not again. You're on your seventh glass of Aldi's wine. Now, I quite enjoy the Aldi's peach wine. Um, they have two peach wines. Ow! They have a peach Bellini and a um, just a pink regular. Um, and they're both quite good. They're both quite enjoyable. Um, so... Anyway, let's see, let's see. Next we will read, should I stay on the couch or should I get up? I think I should stay on the couch, right? I'm, I'm comfy here, I'm comfy here. Um, before we continue though, let's take a nice, another nice close look at our tree up here. So let me find our tree real quick. So let's take a nice look at all of the ornaments done by everybody. Let's take one last nice look. We have our tree topper. And then we have just everything else looks absolutely wonderful. We have our girls ornament. We have our, um, our troopa. We have our, whoa, whoa. We have our troop ornament. We have our gosling. We have our soy. <gasps> and then we have our okay. We have our Merry Christmas troopas. We have our watermelon. And then we have our sneed because we cannot stop sneeding. The Christmas topper especially is interesting because I used to have one of those. And I don't know if you've ever looked under, but like it's kind of just a plastic hoop under. Like you want to see like what's under her, um, what's going on in the undercarriage, you know. It's not actually all that, it's not actually all that interesting. It's just kind of, you know, it's kind of there in her little um, snatcheroonie, you know. It's just... There's, so, there's something going on there, but it's not, you know, it's not what you expect, if that makes sense. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, sneed, feed, and seed. Sneed, feed, and seed. So, next we will be reading... Ba -ba 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 next we will be reading Twas the Night Before Christmas. So, let us begin. I hope you can't hear my mice. Fuck you. Fuck you. Stop beating me blind. Stop beating me until I'm blind. Find you a girl that's just a hoop under the dress. I know, right? So, let us begin. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas would soon be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads, and Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap, when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter. I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below, when what to my wondering eyes did appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. 
with a little old driver, so lively and quick. I knew in a moment he must be Saint Nick, more rapid than eagles, his coursers they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As, that le as leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they met with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur, from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler, just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him, in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team, gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. But I heard him explain, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. I'm glad to hear it is peak comfy wise. Thank you so much. So next we will do how the Grinch stole Christmas, if that is okay with everybody. I do have um two more stories set up after the Grinch, and I'll see how we um are doing. One is something that I don't know if everybody has um has heard of, but I'm not quite sure if I'll be doing that one. Um I'll have to see um, how I feel about that. Let's see. So, every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a holly who wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow's Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to keep Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, I know all the Who girls and boys will wake up bright and early. They'll rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise. Noise, noise, noise. There's one thing I hate. All oh, the noise, noise, noise. 
and they'll shriek, squeaks, and squeals, racing round on their wheels. They'll dance with their jingliers tied onto their heels. They'll blow their flu floofers. They'll bang their tarkatoos. They'll blow their woo hoppers. They'll bang their car dukas. They'll spin their trump tukas. They'll slam their slu slunkas. They'll beat their blum loopas. They'll wham their who wonkas. And they'll play noisy games like zitazoo carzy a roller skate type of lacrosse and croquet. And then they'll make ear splitting noises galooks on their great big electra who canary flukes. <laughs> And the who's young and old will sit down to feast, and they'll feast, and they'll feast, and they'll feast, feast, feast. They'll feast on who pudding and rare who roast beef. A raw roast beef is a feast I can't stand in the least. And they'll do something I hate most of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, they'll stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'll stand hand in hand, and their whoos will start singing. For who, for rays, the who, the rays, welcome Christmas, come this way. For who, for rays, the who, the rays, welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. Welcome, welcome, for who, Ramus, welcome, welcome, da who, da moose. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so long we have hands to clasp. For who, for rays, da who, da rays. And they'll sing, and they'll sing, and they'll sing, sing, sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this, who's Christmas sing? The more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for fifty years I've put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. I'll make a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick. With his coat and his hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer, the Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? Ha! Huh. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he took his dog Max, and he took some black thread, and he tied a big horn on top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh. He whistled for Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up, and the sleigh started down towards the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark. No one knew he was there. All the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without a care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed, as he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He stuck only once. He got stuck only once for a minute or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, with a little whose stockings hung all in a row. These stockings, he grinched, are the first things to go. And then he slithered and slunk, with a smile most unpleasant, around the whole room. And he took every present. Pop guns, pemgpugas, pantukas, and drums, checkerboards, bills bigs, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. And the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags, one by one, up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox and took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beef. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took the last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. Now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. As the Grinch took that tree, as he started to shove, he heard a small sound, like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast, and he saw a small who. Why, little Cindy Lou who, who was no more than two. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? 
But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the, faint scent, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light up on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, and then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child, then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. When Cindy Lou, who was in bed with her cup, he crept up the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar, and the last thing he took was the log for their fire. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire, and the one speck of food that he had left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was a quarter of dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up the sled. He packed it up with their presents, their ribbon, their wrappings, their snoop, and their flozzles, their tinglers and trappings. Ten thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tippity top to dump it. Poo poo to all the who's, he was grinchly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry, Boo-hoo. That's a noise, Grinch, grinned the Grinch. That's a noise I simply must hear. He paused, and the Grinch put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started low, and it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded glad. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch, ice, gr with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could this be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. He puzzled, he puzzled and puzzed till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And then the true meaning of Christmas came through, and the Grinch found the strength of ten Grinches plus two. Now his heart didn't feel quite so tight. He whizzed his load through the snow, through the bright morning light. With a smile in his soul, he descended Mount Crumpet, cheerily blowing hoo hoo on his trumpet. He rode the who he rode into Whoville. He brought back their toys. He brought back their floof to the Who girls and boys. He brought back their snoots and their tinglers and fossils. He brought back their pantukas, their dafflers and wassels. He brought everything back. All the food, all the feast, and he drove himself. The Grinch and he himself, the Grinch carved the roast beef. Welcome Christmas, bring your cheer, cheer to all who's far and near. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so as long as we have hands to grasp, Christmas Day will always be, just as long as we have we. Welcome Christmas, while we stand, heart to heart. Hand to hand. The Grinch is real. He tried to eat my ass. <laughs> well, that was the end of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I think we will perhaps actually end there because it's actually close to, um, I really have to be up early tomorrow morning. So I think we will stop it there. But tomorrow we do have um, a lovely collab with Nina Kitanya 
and Neko. So I hope you will join us. But thank you all for coming on this Christmas Eve or perhaps Christmas Day of yours, whichever it is. I hope that you know it was comfortable, you had some nice time chilling, and you enjoyed the uh, the two stories we read in the new one by Calavera, because I enjoyed it quite a lot. But I hope you all have a Merry Christmas, and I hope your fortunes came out good as well. Good luck with everything, and you know, have something good to eat if you haven't already. Yes, with the girls. So Goku's heart disease was the same as the Grinch. Something fell down, and I don't know what it was. Oh my god, it's a ghost. They're coming for me. They're coming because I'm not asleep. Ah! Um, so, actually, we need to find somebody, um... We need to find somebody to raid, first of all. So let's see. Hmm. Okay, we actually have, um... Let's see, there's... KK Cyber, there's Lapin, there's Shady, there's Callie, we raided Callie last night, there's Secret and Bird, Karaki, um, there's Koki, Koki is doing a special event, so is Picky, um, does anybody have any preferences? Merry Krampus, Merry Krampus. <laughs> <laughs> There's also Emmy as well. Um, so does anybody have any um way they're leaning? I can't catch. I have no hands. I have no hands at all. Oh fuck you. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh goodness. Fuck you. So we have one for Shady and one for Emmy. Um I do really like Shady, but we haven't we rated Shady fairly recently, didn't we? We haven't rated Emmy in a while. And we do have, on Christmas Eve, I will actually be doing a stream with Emmy. So actually, let us go with Emmy. We will be doing kind of a, um, a CBT type because she's doing a, um, a very long marathon stream. And we will be, um, talking over, um, some, um, some things. We will be talking over, um, people fighting so um if you go on the twitter there's actually a place where um people can enter if they want to enter to um you know watch people you know get the fucking shit beat out of them if that is your you know thing with a uh, smash but i do look um i do look forward to that i look forward to tomorrow and um i hope you all had a merry christmas eve merry christmas you know cbt yes cbt <laughs> I didn't know that um, Joel had the CBT emote. I'm so glad. Raid message is Merry Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas Eve. I don't usually do raid message, but you know, just Merry Christmas. Any sort of Christmas greeting. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big one, but I will send through that raid request now. So everybody, Merry Christmas Eve or Christmas. I will be seeing you tomorrow if it's your Christmas or it may be your day after Christmas. But Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Bye bye. Otsukupa. Oyasuminasai. Good night. Bye.